Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan J. Reinhardt from Wargaming Recon, and we are here once again for the Pandemic Coffee Break. So today is Thursday, April 30th, 2020, that's right, the final day of the month, and I can't believe we're almost done with another week as well here with you, and it's just amazing really that this thing continues on here. Uh, we've been streaming. I've been streaming um, every day, Monday through Friday. It's turned out to be not, not every day, but every weekday, Monday through Friday, uh, joining you because I am one of those who's lucky enough to work from home. And just like when I'm at work, I'm taking a coffee break. Although today, can you believe I'm still working on my <laughs> beverage from early in the week uh, and it's been in the fridge. It's fine. <laughs> it's just, I'm still powering through this thing. And it's just, it's so crazy that this is happening and that we're still doing it and everything. So it's just, it's rather funny to me that that is, uh, <laughs> that that's the thing. Um, my goodness. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> it's good though. So I hope you have your beverage with you as well. Now, today, we're going to talk about a few things. I have a, a bunch of stuff on the um, on our little talking points that I want to make sure that I cover with all of you. And um, I thought maybe we could just jump right in as I am looking at the stream here and seeing what we have um, planned for everyone. So I want to start by uh, sharing some more um, updates with you from what is uh, what we've been doing with MDF kits. So all of you had voted in, um, not all of you, you have voted in a poll. We had a poll on our uh, Twitter account and on the Warrior Recon fan club Facebook group so that people could vote on that and choose what things for the basement kit I would work on next. And then uh, it was uh, decided for me to do the hay cart from the Russian village. And I, I've made a lot of headway with it, but I've encountered a problem. <laughs> so this is where it stands right now. We have most of the cart built, the pack wheels on. Um, I, you might not be able to tell, but I broke an axle. I'm sorry, battle damaged an axle <laughs> for it. And uh, but it's fixed. I use super glue, so it's nice and fixed. Um, I don't know why, but like the fit was so tight to get this in that just pushing on it and it ended up snapping. I guess I'm harder on these things than I expect I am. But <laughs> we got it there, and I came across a problem though, and where I was following the instructions and it turns out that the instructions are wrong and it's more that the pictures are wrong so when you're working on this front part which has the axles here and then the thing that's sticking out in the front it tells you to assemble it in a certain way so you actually have to assemble yeah you can kind of see right here there's two circles that go on and there's a peg so it tells you to do the peg going down from the top, from the facing. The facing's always the side. It has all like the extra cool engraving on it and everything. So it tells you to go down from the top, and then you put the circles on the bottom. But then later on, if you look closely, you'll see that the peg went from the bottom, and the circles are on the top. And that's the correct way it's supposed to be. Uh, and the reason is, so when you connect it in here, you're actually connecting to the circle. You put in these circles here so that it moves. And you might think, oh, well, that's not a big deal. You just have the other side up, but it doesn't have all the uh, detail on it and the great uh, design that's put in by things in the basement. Uh, so I was like, well, what, what am I going to do? And I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to handle it. And I was like, well, you know, there's a lot of great design in it. So I, I reached out to Jorg and I was like, I think... The instructions are wrong. I think the pictures are wrong. And can you let me know if I'm right, that maybe this is how it's supposed to be? Maybe I am thinking correctly, or maybe 
it doesn't really matter. Uh, and it turned out, no, I'm right, that the pictures are wrong. I don't know if they've been updated yet or not. No, the pictures are wrong. And that um, I was like, well, can I just have a, a new front part <laughs> here? Because it's really nicely designed and I want to you know, get it in. So it's being sent out to me. I'll get this and then I'll be able to finish the cart. That's like literally the last part I got to do. Um, not literally, I guess, because there's one more part. But I, I have to get this in here and then just glue the wheels on with the pegs that keep the wheels on. And that's all I have to do. And then we'll have this so it can turn and everything. So I unfortunately have to wait for the replacement part to come in. And then I can go ahead and finish that. And that is just, <laughs> it's disappointing um, to me uh, about that. But that's where we are with it. Uh, so we're gonna be doing another poll actually. And this other poll is gonna be, um, for um, what kit I should do next. So we'll have that on Twitter as well as the Facebook fan club pay, uh, group. And we'll get that going. <laughs> and we'll just see how it is. But it's like, it's just always my luck that... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to break something, right? <laughs> it's just, there's a reason why I've told York in the past that he should just have me battle damage stuff for him to sell to um, people and they can get a pre battle damage and then it'd be great. And there you go. It's just, <laughs> so I don't know. Well, uh, before we move on, uh, I want to just welcome everyone who's watching live. So Mike, John, Dave, and Nathan, thank you all for watching live and really appreciate that. And um, we're gonna be moving on to a couple things that are maybe a little more, um, yeah, a little more heartfelt. <laughs> Not that this isn't heartfelt, you know what I mean. But, Things that are um, a little more meaningful, I guess. So I want to um, start off um, by saying, <laughs> uh, oh, John says, endeavor to persevere. Uh, thank you. Um, I want to start off by saying <laughs> that uh Life is awful right now, right? <laughs> For people, the pandemic's happening. Life's really hard. The people who don't have enough to eat, people who've lost their jobs, who've been uh, let go, people are being furloughed, people who can't go anywhere, people whose mental health is having problems, people who are dying. And it's hard. It's really, really, really hard. And I don't know about you, but there are times where, um, where I feel helpless. I'm someone who just has this strong desire and need and urge to help other people to try to make the lives of others better. And I'm stuck at home, right? I, I'm, I do what I can, but it's hard because I, I don't have the skills. I don't have the abilities. I'm not able to make things better. I'm not able to help people. I'm not able to fix stuff, but there are people out there who are, there's the doctors, the scientists, the first responders, people who are working the front lines everywhere, doing jobs that, you know, we may never have wanted to do ourselves or uh, didn't think that we could. And they're doing this all the time to make life better for the rest of us. And it turns out that a couple of them work here at Working Marie Con. They're part of our team, part of our family. And so I want to put a spotlight on them both. Uh, so the first one I want to put a spotlight on is Jamie. And I was talking with Jamie to ask how he felt about this. Because um, Jamie's uh, a private guy and he's rather reserved, a little shy. Uh, but he is just the kindest, gentlest person around uh, who's really funny. Uh, he is brave and smart. He's a... Uh, wonderful father and husband and 
he works on the front lines in Norway. He works uh, in a supermarket, and he makes sure that people get the food that they need so that they can stay safe and healthy. He works in, in an environment where he's putting himself at risk, no matter what sort of precautions that they're taking. He puts himself at risk every single day, him and his family, to go out, to go to work, to do all the stuff that has to be done so that the rest of us can stay the heck home and so that those who can go out and get all the supplies that they need so that they basically don't die. And I just, I am so thankful to him for doing this. And I said to him that uh, I think it's really, I don't think that people realize what he's doing and it may not feel like a whole lot, right? Like you just, you're going to work, right? You, that's all you're doing. You're going to work and you just, you're going to work in a grocery store and you're checking people out or you're restocking, you, you're unloading and loading and you're doing all the stuff that you do at work, right? And it doesn't feel maybe glamorous. It doesn't feel like maybe it's um, a thing that makes a difference, but it makes a huge difference. And I said to him that I wanted, if he was up for it, I wanted to put a spotlight on him and I wanted to let others know what he's doing and for people to know how grateful I am and that I'm sure others out there, I'm sure that there are those of you who are grateful to him and to people like him who are doing the same thing in your own communities. And so I wanted to take a moment to just say thank you to Jamie and to everyone who's working so hard and just working on the front lines and doing these things um, so that the rest of us can try to get by. Now, I also want to put a spotlight on another fellow who's part of our team, and that's Joshua. So Joshua is another wonderful individual, and really everyone here who's on the team at Wargaming Recon are just the great people. Uh, we've been able to form bonds and friendships, and I think that kind of shows in the content that we create for all of you. I think and I hope that you sense that and that you feel some sort of connection with us and that you feel like you can come to any of us and talk to us if you need someone to talk to or to listen. Um, and that you all know that we care about you too. It's some people do this kind of stuff, right? Some people do podcasts or, or video or YouTube or whatever. They say they care and, and I think they do in a broad sense, right? But I don't know how many of them actually form or want to form personal connections or deep connections with members of the audience. And we do. We really want to get to know all of you as many as we can. We want to know that we're here to support you and that we care about you and that we want you all to have good, happy, meaningful lives, doing things that bring you joy and that you are safe and well, not just now during the pandemic, but at all times. And Joshua is definitely one of those who lives that. So he works he works in a medical field where he helps those who need a little bit of extra support and assistance i think it's called direct care i think that's the best way you could kind of phrase it so he's out there every day with different patients and clients to help them get through the day he's an essential employee down in australia he has to go out every single day to work and he does it because for him, it is a calling. He wants to help people. He wants them to have their best lives possible. And so he's out there, but it's dangerous too, right? Because again, no matter how much protection one does, he's still putting himself at risk. He's putting his wife and his kids at risk. And so he's doing this because he cares and he wants to, and he needs to, and he's also doing it because he's able to, and the rest of us are not. So he's making a difference down there in the lives of those who he's helping. And again, he's just someone who is selfless. He is so giving and uh, loving and caring. He's a smart and funny guy, and he has a wicked sense of humor. I'm just so grateful to him that he's part of our team and that he's doing all of this. And I think it's important, again, that there's a Joshua in all of our communities, just like there's a Jamie in all of our communities, people who are doing these things and who maybe aren't getting the recognition they deserve. And I'm not saying that any of them are doing it to be recognized. That's not 
why they are. But I think it's good for them to know that we're aware of what they're doing, that we are grateful, that we care. And so if anyone just wants to give a shout out to someone in your own communities who's doing special stuff or to either of these individuals, please feel free to do so. You can leave it in the comments over here uh, or if, if you're watching later down below on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, um, and you can do that and we will be sure to highlight that. Um, but also, like I said, if there's anyone in your own community, I think it's, I think there's a lot of value there to let people know we're all in this together and how much we appreciate. And so that's why I think things like, although it seems kind of weird, right, that people would do this, but that there are things where communities are going and uh, where like school teachers are doing car parades where they stay in the cars and they drive around the communities and, and wait for the kids or um, where I'm at, the emergency services, um, we have a hospital in town uh, and emergency services did like the same kind of thing to show support to all the hospital workers and uh, the medical professionals who are on the front lines. And sometimes when you're working in things, I think it's possible for you to be so caught up in what you're working on and just getting the job done and just trying to get through it because you're living it, right? Um, that it may not feel, especially in the difficult times, it may not, you might despair, I guess is what I'm saying. And so, Whereas this is the year of mental health for Wargamer Marie Recon, just want people to know that we are all in this together, as cheesy as that sounds, and we're here for everyone. So I hope that if you um, know someone who is doing any of these things, that you reach out to them and let them know that they are thought of and that they're cared about. Um, so that's me being, I guess, preachy. Yeah, and maybe a little um, too cringy, maybe for a bit, but I think it's important. So I wanted to highlight that. I also want to say um, hi to Adrian and to uh, Philip. Thank you uh, all for joining today. Uh, and um, I want to share another Architects of War kit with you. So I referenced yesterday that um, I had uh, obtained more than one Architects of War kits and that of course Architects of War was out of business and I, the whole story about how I got them at uh, Huzzah up in Maine. So I have another one here that I'm going to pull and I want to show you. So this is still the original box that I got it in. <laughs> with all the Architects of War stuff, the product code and everything. I'm so sad that they're not in business anymore. I really am. And I'm going to show you it's a sh what they call the shanty. little ASMR for you. <laughs> now, this is another one that I'm going to show you that I had... My buddy Mike work on for me and this is a heavy duty piece so he painted it for me and it was just delightful so this is a little like shanty plantation kind of shanty uh but you can you could use it for just about anything it's very very solid it's a nice piece right here uh you can see it's all uh the wooden sides that's been done nice hard um i believe resin base here a lot of weight to this thing has a window, a door, which doesn't move, but you could uh, choose to keep it shut or open, depending on how you want to glue it. The roof comes off, so let's take the roof off. You can see how thick that roof is, right? And actually, a cool thing about the roof, uh, to show you, is right here. Do you see? There's a bird's nest. And I thought that was a, a neat little um, feature that they um, included in this. So that's really cool. And then inside was some nice detail. So you got a fireplace right here, which is really cool. And a little pail by there, probably for the coals or whatever, in a bed. So very minimalistic, but a really cool piece, a nice kit. I don't remember what I paid for this, and you can't get it anymore. So it does. I guess it doesn't matter anyway. But a cool thing about this is 
the only thing that was separate was the door. Everything else was all here. The door, um, the door in the, the roof, of course. So all you had to do was paint this. And that was, I think, part of my reason that I got it. I was like, this will be really cool because I can, I'll just paint it. It'll be okay. Of course, I never did. Um, and it'll be good to go 28 mil and we can use it for all sorts of stuff. Uh, and it didn't happen uh, until I had <laughs> uh, Mike do it for me. But it's just, it's a nice piece. And again, because it's resin, it is heavy as heck there's a lot of heft to this and people like things that have heft right they like when there's a lot of weight and when it feels like it's substantial and that there's something cool and valuable there uh and this certainly feels like it so uh i've kept this in its original box where it's been nice and stored for ages in a nice cool environment where it doesn't get wet or anything <laughs> i feel like i'm talking about a museum piece which is kind of funny uh to me uh as well uh but it's really cool uh that uh this is there and like you john i miss them so much and i wish that there were more of their stuff that we could at least get their back catalog and you know i honestly i don't know what happened there really and, and do, do any of you know I know when they were doing um, All Quiet on the Martian Front, which is the name that I forgot yesterday, that uh, they had some troubles, and I guess things didn't go as well, and they maybe overextended, and so they went out. But I thought someone, I thought Warlord actually bought them out about the properties, um, and that things were fine. So I'm kind of surprised that the terrain never went anywhere, because I feel like someone owns the rights to the terrain. And probably has a stack of it in storage somewhere, like not just a customer, but like like an actual business. And the molds must be somewhere too, right? Like I don't think that the molds got uh, destroyed uh, or anything. So I think they're on. Oh, Nathan says Miniature Market bought them out. Okay, so does m I have an interesting relationship with Miniature Market, <laughs> and I try not to go there very often, but. Do they have any of this stuff for sale? Can you buy the stuff? Or is it just that they bought out their stock and we're like, we're done with it? Because I don't know. But I they, I feel like there has to be a way to get these kits back. And even if it's not like a long-term thing, but like a limited whatever, or if they want to do a crowdfunding to just bring a selection on the back for a while, like there has to be something, right? Because they would just be like, you don't have to change them. These are beautiful kits, beautiful terrain pieces. And... uh. You just you'd be golden there. Oh, and I want to say hi, York. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Dave says all quiet was taken over by another company. Miniature Market actually sold them, and yeah, I, I feel like Warlord. I feel like I've seen the Warlord um, Warlord games had sold um, uh, some all quiet on the uh, Russian front stuff, but. I think that's long done. I think it wasn't even that profitable for them. Uh, and it's funny because when that came out, I remember looking at it and thinking like, oh, you know, so the Kickstarter and that like the models look cool and everything. And at the time, I didn't really pay any attention to who was doing the Kickstarter. Just, I guess I just thought it was Warlord or someone else. Um, so I don't think I ever really connected it to Architects of War. And when they went out, I was like, why did they go out? And I found out about the connection between the two and I was surprised. But I remember thinking with the game that like it looked really neat. The models were cool and everything, but having the feeling that like, this is going to be here for five minutes and then it's gone. Uh, and a lot of, I feel like a lot of games are that way uh, where all this time and effort and money gets put into them. And then as soon as they come out, you can tell even if they get taken up by everyone that they're just, they're not going to last. I felt that way about Malifaux. I felt that way about this. I feel this way about a couple current games that are out by uh, another big company um, who's I'm not going to name <laughs> the games or the company because I don't want to upset anyone, but I don't think they're going to be here very long. I think as soon as their product lines are out, they're basically done anyway. So I don't really know what's going on, but I do miss these architects of war pieces. And like I said, they don't have to do anything, just recast them and or cast them, not recast, because I don't want to imply that it's recasting, you know what I mean? But uh, to cast them again and just put them out and do a limited run, sell them. I think they would do so well and people would buy them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, speaking of Warlord, though, uh, so Aiden and I had been talking the past day or two, I guess, about some controversy on Facebook involving Warlord games and a very popular uh, Facebook group for tabletop miniature gaming set in the Black Powder period. 
and the group uh, is was called, and that's part of the controversy, was called something like Warlord Games Black Powder or something, something, something. And it's supposed to be for people who are enthusiasts of Warlord Games Black Powder, but also the Black um, Gunpowder era of gaming and things like that. And so from what I've heard and what's been made publicly available, so things could be changing. It's an evolving story. Um, things had changed at points where the group just suddenly, because uh, I'm a member, I noticed the name was different. I was like, what the heck is this? And Adrian, who's also a member, had noticed the name was different. And the story at first was that Warlord had made the group change the name or face legal consequences because it used the Warlord name and it didn't trademark and all that kind of stuff. And that they had to change it and they also had to remove the word black powder or words depending on if you separate it but black powder had to get um taken out of the group name and otherwise it'd be legal consequences and so people were up in arms uh, about uh, like why would warlord do this and how dare they and some more reasonable people uh, had explained that you know warlord has to protect their trademark which is true or they lose it or, or can lose it rather uh, but the whole, like, why would they force the loss of the words black powder? And that just seemed really odd. And slowly it came out that Warlord isn't the one who is being unreasonable by any stretch of the imagination. And Warlord Games has a strong history of working with communities uh, who want to uh, support their games <laughs> and, and play them and help people who are enthusiasts about it. So it turned out that the group or one or more administrators, I'm not sure, uh, were told that they had to drop the name Warlord Games because that's the name of the company. Uh, or what they could do is they could change the name to include unofficial in it because if they wanted to keep it as an official group, then they had to allow Warlord employees into it to be the administrators and to basically control it. That would be an actual Warlord thing. And that as such, people could not criticize or complain or say anything but nice stuff about Warlord products. And they could only talk about Warlord products, which makes sense, right? Because if you're an official Warlord thing, this is what you're going to do. And at the time, and this may have changed, but one or more of the administrators who I was told did not like that it would be called unofficial. And they felt that was inappropriate. And how dare they, because they're a large group. And for me, it was just it was interesting to see how people were changing their opinion to go from how dare Warlord Games do this and they're evil and we don't like them and oh, the jerks and I don't want to support them and I don't want to do stuff with them again uh, to wait a sec that's reasonable what are you talking about like we don't like it but like why not and for me it's just kind of indicative of this day and age where people don't wait to get the full story they only look at a headline or a part of it they don't actually see what it means or what any of it has to do and I just I find it really interesting that that's happening but if you've seen any of this online uh warlords not being a jerk <laughs> they're really not uh so there's that uh as well um well i see that we are nearing the end of today's pandemic coffee break um we do have more stuff but tomorrow's another day tomorrow's first day of may so that's really exciting and um, we will have that poll up for all of you to vote. And please don't forget to vote on what MDF kit you want me to work on next. And we'll have it going. Um, so we'll uh, announce results in tomorrow's pandemic coffee break. So I hope all of you are doing well. And remember, when it comes to all this pandemic stuff and everything, it's hard. But we can get through it together. We're here to support one another. And most importantly, do not listen to Karen on Facebook because she is wrong. She tells lies and you can't trust her. So just don't trust Karen. Uh, she's wrong. You know who you can trust? You can trust all the doctors and scientists and medical professionals. All of those people who actually know what they're talking about with this disease and everything listen to them trust them do not trust karen on facebook because she is wrong 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 and really besides that the most important stuff is take care of yourself times are hard but remember 
good enough is good. You can get through this. We can get through this. And if you need help in any way, shape, or form, whether it's you need someone to go grocery shopping for you, you need someone to talk to, you need five minutes to go in a corner and cry or to eat things that you wouldn't do or, or just to sit quietly and stare off into the void or watch a TV show or read a book or whatever. Do it. It's okay. The world's not going to stop. No one's going to die. You got to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. So just go ahead and do it. Well, thank you all for joining us for today's pandemic coffee break. I really appreciate that you take the time to do that and to allow me to speak with you and just kind of have this time together. Uh, I think it's really valuable. Well, you know the drill. No matter how busy you are, no matter how much time you're spending thinking, man, I want me some architects of war back. Where the heck are they? Come on, people. You know that you have to. You gotta. You need to. That's right. Keep on gaming. Thanks, everyone. Be well.